Welcome. So I've already made a, one of these videos, but I wanted to do another one because I think the camera was like kind of messed up last time. So uh, I'm going to do a nice little video on the leading coefficient test. Now, when talking about the leading coefficient test, we can't talk about the leading coefficient test unless we first talk about a polynomial. And remember, a polynomial can be in the form of a sub n or x to the n plus a to the n minus minus 1, x to the n minus 1, dot, 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 a sub 1, x sub 1, plus a sub 0. Now, to understand all of this or really comprehend it is not really that necessary. But this is our standard, our <clears throat> a written form of a polynomial that's going to represent all polynomials. Now, when dealing with uh, the leading coefficient test, we're really not going to be concerned with every single part of the polynomial, but only what we call our leading term. And that is going to be our first term when our polynomial is in descending order. Notice how this is goes n, n, then n to the minus 1, and then it's going to go keep on going all the way down to you get x to the first and then x to the 0, which I didn't write in here because x to the 0 would be uh, to the first power. So we're really not going to be concerned about the rest of it. As long as we have our polynomial in descending order, we're just going to be concerned about our first term of our polynomial. Now, this is what we call a leading term. And remember, our leading term, the degree of our polynomial, is going to be n. So we'll say the degree is equal to n. And the leading coefficient is going to be equal to a sub n. Now, when determining our uh, le uh, leading coefficient test, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the degree and the leading coefficient of our polynomials. And we have to make sure it's in descending order first. But then what we're going to do is we're just going to investigate looking at the degree and the leading coefficient and determine what our m behavior is going to be for our polynomial. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of three different graphs. And I'm going to make this pretty, um, pretty busy over here. So I'm going to do kind of three graphs. All right, now, what we're going to do is what we need to understand about looking at polynomials is there's only four types of n behavior that we can have with the polynomial. So first of all, when looking at the degree, all we're going to be concerned about a degree is if it's going to be even or odd. That's it. It can't be positive or negative because it's an exponent. And if it was negative, then it'd be in the denominator. and We wouldn't have a polynomial. So we're going to look at the degree. Is it even? Or is the degree odd? All right. Now, when the degree is even, I always like to look at our most common type of uh, even function, which would be the x squared. So here's an example of x squared. And here's an example where our degree would be odd. So if I said f of x equals x squared, and here f of x equals x cubed. Now, you could use x to the fourth. You could use x to the fifth. You could use x to the tenth, x to the eleventh. It doesn't matter what degree you're dealing with. I like to deal with the easiest ones or the most simple ones that we're familiar with. But as long as you have your degree is even, all even polynomials are going to have the same end behavior. So let's go and graph um, our x squared. Now, now we need to look at our LC. When our LC is going to be positive or when our LC is going to be negative. So I'm kind of running out of a little room here. See? So here we'll have, uh, hmm. All right. We can erase this. So here we'll say our leading coefficient is positive. Here, our leading coefficient is negative. And what I'll do is I'll put this back up here. f of x equals a sub n x to the n, where n equals our degree, and a sub n equals our leading coefficient. All right, so now let's just go ahead and get a graph, because I, I use x squared and x cubed, because we should have an idea of what the parent graph looks like. So when we have our even degree, and it's positive, we know that the graph is going to open up. And it's going to look something like this. When it's uh, is negative, we know that it's going to open down. Now, let's go and look at the 
cubic function x cubed. Well, when our, we have a cubic function that is positive, it looks something like this. And when it's negative, it goes something like this. All right, so I'm going to describe m behavior in a couple different ways. First of all, I'm just going to do kind of the layman's way that just kind of makes the most sense and is pretty easy to replicate. Whenever we have any even degree that is positive, you can see that it rises left and rises right. right? The graph, as it continues to grow, rises to the left and rises to the right. When my leading coefficient is negative, you can see that it falls left and falls right. All right. Now, let's go and take a look at when it's odd. And notice that for even, they both go in the same direction, either both positive or both negative. For an odd degree, you can see that here, this one falls left and then rises right. Okay, so for odd degrees, they're going to go in the opposite. If one goes up, the other one goes down. And that's going to be true for all odd degrees, not just cubes. It could be to the fifth, to the seventh, to the 33rd power. If my leading coefficient is negative, it rises left and falls right. All right, now these might make sense. And you say, OK, I kind of understand that. But a lot of times, and especially when we're doing kind of standardized tests, we don't write these um, in this format. And what we usually like to talk about is our function, f of x. right? Now, when we're talking about a function f of x, we know that we have an f of x axis and an x axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label each one of these axes. So now what we can do is we can talk about each point on our function and where the behavior is going. All right. So let's just go and take a look at my Let's just take a look at a point on this function. So what we could say is, as this function, as my point, right, as it approaches infinity, right, so or um, as my point, as the x value, we could say that this is an inf ah, let me write over here. So as it goes to the right, we know that it's going to be approaching infinity, right? As it's going up, we know it's approaching affinity. As it goes to the left, it approaches negative infinity. As it goes down, it approaches negative infinity. So what we like to write here is as x approaches infinity. So as the x coordinate of this point approaches infinity, so as it goes to here, to here, to here, it keeps on going farther to the right, where is f of x going? Well, the f of x function is going up as well. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. And then we could say, as our x's now move to the left, as they start approaching negative infinity, we could show that f of x also approaches infinity. So we could say, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. All right, this is more of a standard formal way to write this. We could see over here. As my, x as my points on the x-axis go towards infinity, I'm actually now, my f of x, my points f of x are going down to negative infinity. So you could write, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And then we could say, as x approaches negative infinity, so now as we move to the left, we could say that f of x approaches negative infinity. And we can do the exact same thing over here. As my points move to the right, to the positive, we can see that f of x approaches infinity. So we could write here, um, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. And then as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And over here, as x approaches infinity, so as we go to the right, f of x approaches negative infinity. And then we could say, as x approaches negative infinity, so as our points move to the left, f of x approaches infinity. 
Okay? And this all stems again from our coordinate point of x comma f of x. All right? And what I'm just trying to represent with you is as my points go to positive infinity, f of x is going to go to positive infinity or negative infinity. So that's where all this comes from. I know it's a lot to kind of take in, but hopefully you can write this down, remember it, study it, and therefore you have a better idea on how to apply the leading coefficient test. Thanks.